Hello, it's Tuesday, so welcome back to another Maya Q&A. This week, Funky Fresh asks, I'm having trouble creating a joint chain for my bicycle gear chain. In my scene, I have the front and rear gears, a CV curve, and a single piece of a chain link. I've tried many different things, but I can't seem to figure it out. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I think that creating a joint chain to arrange a bicycle chain is just a little bit too complex, and thanks to the members of the community for suggesting to use MASH as a solution. So I'm going to start my scene off by modeling a single bike chain, and I want to make sure that the pivot is centered and its location is right in the middle of the grid. I've frozen the transformations to make all the translation and rotation values zero, and before rigging you should always freeze your transformations and delete the history of all the objects in your scene. I have all the geometry ready, and now I've created a spline curve following the shape of where I want the chain to go. To create the chain and animate all the links, I'm going to use MASH to instance the geometry of that chain link, and I'll do that by going into the MASH shelf tab with the geometry selected and press the first button on the shelf. That will make 10 copies of the chain link, and I'll click open the MASH editor window by pressing this button, and I'm going to change the distribute node's arrangement by adding a curve node on top of it. That way I can connect the links to the spline. I'll do that by opening the outliner and middle mouse button dragging the chain spline onto the panel on the left and I'll always forget that part and end up left clicking the outliner and I'll have to reselect everything all over again 20 or 30 times. The chain isn't correctly distributed but we can see that there is animation on the curve node. My link will move right around the curve following the timeline and I can change later on the speed of the animation. I'll have to go back to the distribute node and change its type from linear to initial state. Now the links are on the spine and to space them out evenly I'll go back to the curve node and change the step to 1 so it fills the whole length of the spline. If the orientation of the links looks wrong that's not a problem, I can unhide the original chain link in the outliner by pressing shift H and then I can rotate it until the links on the curve have the desired orientation. Then I just need to increase the number of points to fill the curve up with chain links. It'll vary a little bit depending on how long your spline is, but in my 3D scene I settled for a number of around 61. I can easily control the direction in which the chain is spinning by adding a negative value to the animation speed. And to choose the correct speed for the chain, I think about the speed I want the main gear chain to move at. I'll settle on a rotation of about one spin per 36 frames, but for now I'm going to eyeball the speed of the chain instead of breaking the time connection and trying to add a custom script as I'm really not great at creating code in a hurry. Now it's time to add some keyframes, so I'll select the front chain ring and key it on frame 0, and then I'll go over to frame 35 and rotate it 360 degrees by typing the value in the channel box. I have to be careful when scrubbing through the timeline because I might get a rolling shutter effect. This is where the chain can seem to be moving in the wrong direction or randomly change directions as Maya's viewport updates and doesn't show you the correct frames. I'm going to use shift and comma or period to frame by frame through my timeline and just double check that the chain ring is moving in the right direction. In the graph editor I can see my rotation curve is easing in, so I will shift select the keys on the timeline, right click and change my tangent type to linear. So the chain ring is now moving at a constant speed. In the graph editor also I'll have to loop the animation past frame 35. To do this I'll go to view and turn on infinity and then I will select the rotate x curve and choose curves post infinity cycle with offset. Now the chain ring will spin no matter how many frames I add on to the timeline. So to make this a little more useful I'm going to add some constraints to the gears and the pedals so that I can animate just one item and the whole bike will follow that single set of keyframes. I'll select the chain ring and then the gears to constrain from driver to driven. I'll open up my animation tool set and go to constraints, orient constraint. 
Now both gears are moving together in the same direction, but I want to change the rate at which the smaller gears move, so I can make them move faster by going into the node editor. I will go to Windows, Node Editor, and I will select the input and output for the gears object. And I'll follow on by selecting the input and output for the constraint because I want to have both the constraint and the front cog object available in the node editor. I will click this button to expand the nodes and see all the attributes and I will look for the rotation value of the front cog and follow the green piece of digital spaghetti until I see that it is connected to target rotate. So now I can press tab on the workspace and add a multiply divide node by typing in the first few letters. And then I will click and drag the rotate value to make a new connection between the front cog and the constraint. I'll just organize my nodes a little, but now we can click on the multiply divide node and inside the attribute editor, we can add a value of two to all the boxes. And now back in the viewport, I can see how the back gears are spinning at twice the speed. Uh, to help you guys see this a little bit more clearly, I've just attached two spheres to each one of the objects and you can see how they're spinning at different rates. Now it's come the time to set up the pedals and I will be using constraints. To start off with, I will orient constraint the crank to the chain ring and I'll do that by adding an orient constraint. If you notice, at the end of each section of the crank, I've placed a locator. I want to use these to track the position of the end of each section of the crank. And to do that, I am going to parent them to the crank geometry by selecting child to parent. And I'm going to press P on my keyboard so that the locators will now spin around with the crank. So now I can constrain the pedals to each one of those locators as I'm going to be using a point constraint. And I'll just check that I have maintain offset turned on. And after I've connected the first one, I can use the G keyboard shortcut on my keyboard to repeat the last command and connect the second pedal. Now that the pedal's rotation is independent from the movement, I can unhide the wheels of the bike and we will also add an orient constraint to both of these objects. Just remember that you want the back cog to be the driver for both of the wheels and always check that you are connecting from driver to driven. I can then unhide the Kayla rig, which I have previously posed, ready to ride the bike, and I can also unhide the bike frame geometry as well. Now I'm going to constrain Kayla's IK legs to the pedals so that the character rig will follow the animation that I've just built. And I'm going to use a parent constraint by going to constraint, parent constraint, and this time I want the foot to follow both the rotation and the position of the pedal. If you notice, now I can rotate the pedals and the feet will follow along with them. So if I spend a little bit of time adding some keyframes to the pedal geometry, and I can also use some attributes inside of the Kayla rig to animate the ball roll of the foot, I can very quickly set up some animation cycles, which will allow me to describe how Kayla is pedaling really, really, really quickly. So I've created this animation just by eyeballing the main properties for the bike. However, this workflow is also expandable. If you know how to script, you could possibly create a much more complex rig that just by moving the bike forward, the entire animation would play at whichever speed you would like. However, we'll leave that for another time. Thanks to Funky Fresh for his question. Remember to like and subscribe if you found the tutorial useful and hit the notification button if you want to know when I'm releasing my latest videos. If you'd like to ask a question that's useful for you to learn more about Maya, then just drop me a line in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and as always, keep learning, stay strong and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.